Hello there, my name is Beth Gaff and I'm the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And uh, first off, just want to let you know that this class is geared to go at your pace, which means that you can minimize this, pause this, go away from this, come back to it at any point. You don't have to sit here all in one setting and, and do this video. You can split it up how you'd like. And speaking of splitting it up, I did end up having to split the class into two parts. Uh, there was a lot for just a part one class, uh, just a one beginner class so I was able to split these up to make it a little bit easier for you for the beginners experience so you'll want to be listening for your computer class pass incentive program um, if you're a part of that you're going to be wanting to listen to your secret code that's in this class and get that to me so I can get you marked down for uh, taking the class if you're not sure what I'm talking about please get in contact with me so I can get you on your way to earning prizes and things uh, no sense in doing all this if you're not going to get anything out of it other than education and I love to give free things away so make sure you listen for that for that uh, for that secret code so without further ado I want to welcome you to Microsoft Excel 2013 for beginners part one in part one this is what we're going to be talking about in section one we're going to watch a video on getting to know Excel we're going to take a look at the Excel interface, take a look at the ribbon, take a look at the backstage view, um, the worksheet view, and of course there is going to be a challenge so you can um, have some hands on. Section two, we're going to be talking about creating and opening a blank spreadsheet and there's a challenge involved with that um, that goes along with the video. Uh, section three, we're going to be watching a video on saving and sharing workbooks and there's a challenge um, in affiliation with that. And in section four, we're going to be talking about cell bakes basics using the fill handle and a challenge that is affiliated with that. So this is everything that's going to be covered just in part one today. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Excel 2013 is a spreadsheet program that allows you to store, organize, and analyze information. You can use it to create contact lists, budgets, invoices, and just about anything else you can imagine. When you open Excel, there's a good chance you'll be taken to the Start screen first. From here you can access recent workbooks or create something new, either from scratch or from a template. In this example, we'll click Blank Workbook. Next, you might want to take a minute to explore the interface and make sure you know your way around. Why don't we begin with the ribbon, which is the collection of tools and features at the top of the screen. The ribbon is divided into tabs like Page Layout, Insert, and Home, so you can easily find what you're looking for. There are also commands on each tab that have been organized into groups. For example, if you look closely at the font group, you'll find it has everything you need to work with text, including options like bold, italics, font color, and size. Some groups even have an arrow in the bottom right corner that you can click to view even more commands. If you ever feel like the ribbon is taking up too much space, you can always hide or minimize it. All you have to do is click the arrow in the upper right corner, then choose the option you want. Also in the upper right corner is a place where you can access your Microsoft account. Here you can update your photo, manage your account settings, or switch to a different account altogether. You can even customize your copy of Excel to make certain commands more convenient. Take the Quick Access toolbar in the upper left corner. This area gives you access to frequently used commands like Save and Undo, no matter where you are in the ribbon. To add more commands, just click the tiny arrow next to the toolbar then choose the ones you want. I'm going to add New and also Quick Print because I use both of these commands pretty frequently. Now let's take a look at the workbook itself, sometimes referred to as a worksheet or a spreadsheet. In this example, I've opened an order list that I'm working on. Every worksheet contains cells, columns, and rows for entering data, plus the formula bar for working with your data. If you need to scroll up or down or even side to side, you can use the scroll bars here and here. In the bottom right corner, you'll find several tools that let you change the way your worksheet is displayed. Here's what they look like up close. 
To zoom in or out, click and drag the zoom control. The number next to the slider will tell you what the zoom percentage is. You can also switch between different worksheet views using the three commands here. Normal is selected by default. This mode is great for everyday tasks like entering and editing data. Page layout shows you what the worksheet will look like on the printed page. You can also add headers and footers here. Page break preview makes it easy to change the location of page breaks in your workbook. This can be especially useful if you're printing lots of data. Last but not least, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the Backstage view. You can get there by clicking the File tab. Just look for it on the far left of the ribbon. Here you can access all kinds of information related to your current workbook and more. This includes commands like New, Open, Save, and Print. All you have to do is click an item, and it'll open in the right pane. This makes it easy to find what you're looking for and review your options all in one place. That covers the basics of Excel 2013. Now that you're comfortable with the interface, including the backstage view, the ribbon, and the work area, you're ready to start your first worksheet. We are now going to take a look at the Excel interface. And here I have a picture of what our interface will look like. And each one of these gold little dots represents something affiliated with our interface. So let's take a look at these. Um, up here in the in the top, this is your quick access toolbar. It lets you access common commands no matter which tab is selected. And by default, it includes the save, undo, and the repeat commands. You can also add other commands. So by pushing on that arrow with that line, you're able to see some of those other types of um quick access toolbar links, if you will, that you can add there to the top just to make it a little faster for yourself so you don't have to go through all the tabs to find those. Um, moving on down, this is our command group. Um, each group contains a series of different commands. You just simply click on any command to apply it. Some groups also have an arrow in the bottom right corner, which you can click to see even more commands. So this shows you um, how to click on a command to apply it. Some groups have the arrow that you can click on for the more options. So you'll see those in the corners of each one of those commanded group panes. The ribbon. Uh, the ribbon contains all the commands you will need to perform common tasks in Excel. It has multiple tasks uh, tabs, each with several groups of commands. So we have different kinds of, um, each tab is divided into groups, and you can click on a tab to see more commands. So that uh, we're going to actually take a little bit deeper look at the ribbon um, a little bit a little bit later on in class here. Um, up here on the right hand corner, this is your Microsoft account. From here, you can access your Microsoft account information, view your profile, and switch between accounts. So um, if you have a Microsoft account, then you'd be able to log in and you'd be able to do things with your settings in there. Your name box. This displays the location or the name of the selected cell. Um, in the image below, you can see it here, cell B4 is selected. And take a note that cell B4 is where the column B and the row 4 intersect. So we can see that here. And then up here in the B4 is where it shows you that is. Here you have your formula bar. In the formula bar, you can enter um, or edit data or formula or a function that will appear in a special, in a specific cell. Um, in this image below here, you can see that cell C1 is selected and 1984 is entered into the formula bar. And you can note how the data appears in both the formula bar and in cell 1. So you can see how it's here and it's also here. So whatever you type in your cell is going to appear in your formula bar. We will not be getting into a whole lot of formulas in this class. I do plan on doing an Excel um, just for formulas and so forth. Um, but I want to get this out to you first just so you have some basic um, instruction. This is your column. A column is a group of cells that runs from the top of the page to the bottom. In Excel, columns are identified by letters. Column H is selected in this image below. So you can see that there. This is column H, and that's why that was there. 
a cell is uh, a rectangle in the workbook that um, a cell is also an intersection of a row and a column so you can simply just click on a certain cell and you can see which one you're working with and in this circumstance it would be B3 and we can see that there uh, a row is a group of cells that runs from left of the page to the right of the page. In Excel, rows are identified by numbers. Each, um, or row 10, is selected in this image below. So that's why they have that little mark here. And this is your row here. Worksheets. Um, Excel files are called workbooks. Each workbook holds one or more worksheets, also known as spreadsheets. Uh, one worksheet will appear by default when you open an Excel workbook. It's easy to rename, add, and delete. So you can see here, um, we can scroll in between the worksheets. We can actually add them if you click on them. Actually, by right-clicking on them, it gives you more of an option to be able to rename, add, and delete. Uh, vertical and horizontal scroll bars. Your spreadsheet may frequently have more data than you can see on the screen at once. Click and hold the dra and drag the vertical and horizontal scroll bar depending on what part of the page you are on. So here's your vertical and here's your hor horizontal. Worksheet view options. There are three ways to view a worksheet. Simply click to select the desired view. You've got your normal view, which is selected by default, means it's automatically selected, and shows you an unlimited number of cells and columns. You also have the page layout view, which divides your spreadsheet into pages, and you have your page break view, which lets you see an overview of your worksheet, which is especially helpful when adding page breaks. And last but not least is our zoom control. You can click and drag the slider to use the zoom control. The number to the right of the slider reflects the zoom percentage. So this is just a quick overall view at our interface of Excel 2013. Just kind of take a deep look here and absorb it all so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to be working with. Now we're going to move on to the ribbon. Excel 2013 uses a tabbed ribbon, ribbon system instead of traditional menus. Uh, the ribbon contains multiple tabs, each with several groups of commands, and you will use these tabs to perform the most common tasks in Excel. So we're going to click on the arrows here in the slideshow uh, to learn a little bit more about the different commands available within each tab ribbon. So the Home tab gives you access to some of the most commonly used commands for working with data in Excel 2013, including copying and pasting and formatting and number styles. The Home tab is selected by default whenever you open Excel. And what default means is that it's already pre-ready to go. It's already selected. If you don't want that one, then you would just move on. The Insert tab allows you to insert charts, tables, spark lines, filters, and more, which can help you visualize and communicate your workbook data um, gradually. So you can see here, um, whatever we want to insert into whatever we're working with, then we would click on the Insert tab to get those items in there. So that's all the Insert tab. Uh, your page layout tab allows you to change the print formatting of your workbook, including margin width, page orientation, and themes. These commands will especially be helpful when preparing to print a workbook. So you can see with the page layout. And don't forget that these little arrows here in the corner mean that there's more to it. There's more involved in that particular uh, command box. So if you push on those, you're going to get a bigger box up that's going to show you more things. But here we're going to be able to set our margins, flip our page, our page uh, set a background. Um, we can adjust our height, width, and scale, add grid lines. Uh, the Formulas tab gives you access to the most commonly used functions and formulas in Excel. These commands will help you to calculate and analyze uh, numerical data, such as averages and percentages. So in the Formulas tab, it's all about formulas. Um, like I've said before, we're not going to get into a whole lot of formulas during this particular class, but future classes we will talk about functions and formulas for sure. 
Uh, the Data tab makes it easy to sort and filter information in your workbook, which can be especially helpful if your project contains a large amount of data. So in here, this is where I can sort. Um, I can do a validation. I can start an outline. They've got a filtering system I can work with, uh, connections and refreshing. Uh, my review, you can use the review tab to access Excel's powerful editing features, including comments and track changes. Uh, these features make it easy to share and collaborate on workbooks. So you can protect and share a workbook. We're not going to talk a whole lot about that today, uh, but that will probably be in our more advanced class as far as formulas and things like that. But you can do your spell check from here, check your thesaurus, things along those lines. Your view tab allows you to switch between different views for your workbook. It also allows you to freeze panes for easy viewing. These commands will also be helpful when preparing to print a workbook. Uh, we will not be talking about freezing panes in this class today. However, it is a good feature and it's part of your view process. So uh, as time goes on, we will get into that. Here is another place where you can change that page layout. You've also got a way to switch yourself in between those windows. You can do a zoom, um, and of course you've got your normal view still. A contextual tab will appear on the ribbon when you're working with certain items like tables and pictures. These tabs contain special commands groups that can help you format these items. The only time that you will find these tabs pop up is if you've inserted something affiliated with that tab. So if you've inserted a table or you've inserted a picture or something along those lines, depending on what you've, what you've inserted is what your tab option is going to be. And evidently in this scenario, they inserted a table. So now they're going to get more functions that they can work with um, on the table itself. Had you inserted a picture, it would have come up here. It would say picture and the tab would be a different color. Had you inserted a text box, it would come up and say text box tools. And it would also be a different color. So this is just kind of getting to know our ribbon a little bit better. I hope you have a little bit better understanding of what each uh, particular ribbon does or um, what each tab in that ribbon does. Um, so take a moment now if you haven't opened up your Excel go ahead and open your Excel now and just kind of take a look at those different tabs that are involved on the ribbon. Now we're going to take a look at your backstage view and this is that file tab that's going to be located at the top of the screen and the contents that are inside of it. And again, we've got our little gold bubbles here, so we're just going to click on them in order. Uh, the back button, it allows you to return to Excel. You can use this arrow to close backstage view and it returns you back to what you're working on. The info pane will appear whenever you access backstage view. It contains information about the current workbook. You can also inspect the workbook and set protection controls from here. New, uh, from here you can create a new blank workbook or you can choose from a large selection of templates and they've provided you with a pretty good ex um, a pretty good pictures here to show you how you can access those. Open, from here you can open recent workbooks as well as workbooks saved to your OneDrive or on your computer. So you'd be able to open up um, different workbooks that you've worked on. Save and save as, you would use save and save as to save your workbook to your computer or to your OneDrive. Uh, the difference between save and save as, save as is telling the computer I have a new workbook here and I've never saved it as something, so I need to save it as something. Um, by just pushing the save button, that means you've already saved it and you want to save the current editing items that you've done um, to the current saved file. So if I've gone in and I've created myself a workbook and I go and I click on save as, from there I'm going to be able to pick my location of where I want that workbook to go and I'm also going to be able to pick the file name for that particular work workbook. Once I create a file name, then I'm able to go in and I can click on it from wherever I have put it. Um, any editing that I would do to that file at that particular moment, I could just hit save from that moment on 
if I don't want uh, to keep the original in its state. So um, I could just keep hitting save and it would save it to that same file that I've already created. Now if I want more than one Excel workbook going on, let's say I've saved it, I've gone in and I've edited it, but I want my original one that I created, um, then I would have to go in and I would have to save those edited features as something else. So if I've saved my workbook as Excel 2013, then I would want to go in if I've made corrections to it but yet I want to keep it in its original state then I would want to go in there and I would want to click on save as Excel 2013 edited and then I would have my original and my edited as well so that's the difference between save and save as uh, from the print pane you can change the print settings and you and print your workbook you can also see a preview of your workbook Share from here you can invite people to view and collaborate on your workbook. You can also share your workbook by emailing it as an attachment. So you have a different you have a few different kinds of share options with that. Um, export, you can choose to export your hand, your workbook to another format such as PDF, XPS, or Excel 1997 through 2003. So you've got different formatting that you can choose. Um, you would click here to close the current workbook. From the account pane, you can access your Microsoft account information, modify your theme and background, and sign out of your account. So you have personal settings in there that you can work with from, the, from your account. Um, here in the options, you can change various Excel options. For example, you can control the quick analysis preferences, auto recover settings, or language preferences. And there's a lot of other things that uh, you can do within that. So this was taking a look at your backstage view and going through some of the more common tasks through your file tab. Um, at this time, go ahead and just kind of look around. You're not going to hurt anything in Excel at all by just looking around. Even push some buttons. Um, worst case scenario, you close it out and you open a new one. Um, but that gets you a little bit more familiar with, with Excel and how to understand what the differences are in all of these backstage views. I just wanted to take a moment, I know that your video showed you some of this, but I just wanted to take a moment to show you the worksheet view options once again. Uh, this is your normal view, this is the default, the default view for all the worksheets in Excel. Um, and then you have your page layout view. Uh, this view can help you visualize how your worksheet will appear when printed. You can also add headers and footers from this. Um, if you're seeing things like this, then that means your column is not wide enough and it needs to be longer. It's not able to fill it in. So you could just pull that column out and uh, that'll help you with that. The break, the page break view, this uh, view makes it easy to change the location of your page breaks to your workbook, which is especially helpful when printing a lot of data from Excel. So I just wanted to, let me run back through them again. So this is your normal view. This is what it would look like. This is your page layout view. And this is your page break view, just so you understand and are able to recognize the different views. Uh, go ahead right now and take a look at yours. Fill in some basic data, something simple, just a few things in the columns. And try pushing on these features at the bottom and see what you get. Now it's time for your first challenge. So go ahead and open Excel 2013. Click through all of the tabs and re view the commands on the ribbon. Uh, try minimizing and maximizing the ribbon. Add a command to your quick access toolbar. We talked about that at the beginning of class. Navigate to the backstage view and open your account settings and try switching worksheet views. Uh, go ahead and close Excel and uh, you do not have to save the workbook. This is just a little challenge to get you going. So uh, good luck and have fun with that. Better life. In Excel, most new projects begin the same way, with creating or opening a new blank workbook. All you have to do is go to the Backstage view and choose New. If you prefer to start from scratch, go ahead and click the thumbnail that says Blank Workbook. But you can also start with a template.
you'll find them in the very same place in the Backstage view. A template is a file that comes with its own design and sometimes even complex formulas or formatting. They make it easy to create professional-looking workbooks without a lot of time and effort. You can browse the ones you see here, or you can search for something specific. If you see a template you like, just click to view a preview, then click the Create button. Opening an existing workbook is also very easy. Again, you'll want to go to the Backstage view, but this time, click Open in the left pane. If the document you're looking for is something you've worked on recently, it might be listed under Recent Workbooks. In fact, you can pin certain workbooks here so you always have access to your most frequently used files. All you have to do is mouse over the file, then click the push pin icon. To unpin it, click the icon again. You can pin as many workbooks as you want. If the file you're looking for hasn't been opened recently, just look to the other options. For example, under SkyDrive, you can access files that are saved online to your SkyDrive account. Under Computer, you can access files that are saved locally. All you have to do is click Browse, then select the workbook you want. When you're ready, click Open, and the workbook will appear. Now you know how to create and open workbooks in Excel 2013. Time for another challenge. That video pretty much summed up um, everything that in, is involved with creating and opening a blank spreadsheet. So at this time, you're going to go ahead and create a new blank workbook, opening an existing workbook from your computer, pin a folder to the backstage view, and create a new workbook using a template. Uh, go ahead and give that a try. If you have any questions or comments about it, give me a call here at the library. Um, if not, I trust that you're doing just fine moving right along. It's important to save your work frequently, in case Excel or your computer shuts down unexpectedly. But there's more than one way to save in Excel 2013. You can also save and share your workbooks online, so you can collaborate with other SkyDrive users. We'll take a look at the regular save command first. You'll find it on the Quick Access toolbar. Just click, and if it's a new workbook, you'll be taken to the Backstage view. Here you can save the workbook to SkyDrive or your computer. In this example, we're going to choose Computer, then click Browse to choose a location. Next, enter a file name for the workbook, and click Save when you're done. Now you can save any time as you continue to work. All you have to do is click the Save command on the Quick Access toolbar again. If you want to save a different version, maybe in a different location or with a different file name, you can go to Save As in the Backstage view and follow the same steps. As you can see, the selection defaults to SkyDrive. If you primarily save workbooks to your computer, you might want to change the default setting so computer is always selected. To do this, click Options in the Backstage view. Then click Save in the left pane, and check the box that says Save to Computer by Default. When you're done, click OK to close the dialog box. If you ever forget to save, or if Excel crashes while you're working, not to worry. The Auto Recover feature saves a backup copy of your workbook automatically. To recover a file that was lost without saving, all you have to do is reopen Excel. The Document Recovery pane should appear on the left. Here you can access any auto-saved versions of the file. By default, Excel autosaves every 10 minutes, so if you're working on something for less than 10 minutes, you may not be able to use this feature. Next, I'd like to show you how to export your file to an alternative file type. You can access your options in the Backstage view under Export. PDF is a good choice if you need to send a file to someone who doesn't have Excel. This format will make it possible for them to view but not edit the workbook using a free program that anyone can download. Under Change File Type, you can access several other formats depending on what you need. For example, if the person you're sharing with has Excel, but it's Excel 2003 or earlier, you'll need to send them a 97 to 2003 workbook instead. Finally, let's take a look at more ways that you can share by going to Share in the Backstage view. 
Here your choices will vary depending on whether or not the file is saved to your SkyDrive account. For example, if it is saved to SkyDrive, you can share it online and invite specific people to collaborate with you. This lets you work on the exact same file with friends, coworkers, and other SkyDrive users so you don't have to keep track of multiple versions or pass the workbook back and forth. Alternatively, you can get a link that you can share any way you want, or you can post the file directly to a social networking site. But it's generally best to invite specific people, unless you have a file that needs to be seen or edited by a much wider audience. How you choose to save and share in Excel 2013 is up to you. It just depends on the workbook. With so many options, you should be able to accomplish exactly what you need, whether it's exporting your file as a PDF or sharing it online. Challenge time! And again, that video pretty much summed up everything that's involved with saving and sharing workbooks. So go ahead right now and create a new blank workbook. Use the save command to save the workbook to your desktop. Save the workbook to the OneDrive and invite someone else to view it. Um, and export the workbook as a PDF file. If you would like to see if it's working, you can go ahead and send your PDF file to me. And uh, my email is bgaff at ppl.lib.in.us. Um, and that is also on the very first slide of this class. So you can send me your PDF and I will respond to you and let you know um, if it came through okay and uh, we will get you going on that. Every worksheet contains thousands of cells where different columns and rows intersect. You'll need to know how to work with these cells in order to enter and edit data. Every cell has its own name based on its location, sometimes called a cell address. In this example, the cell I've selected is where column D and row 6 intersect, making the cell address D6. The address also appears in the name box above the worksheet. To select a cell, just click. You can even use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate between cells instead of clicking with your mouse. To select more than one cell at a time, known as a cell range, click and drag and the entire range will be highlighted. You can enter lots of things into a cell. For example, all of mine contain text. But they can contain advanced properties too, like formulas, functions, and formatting elements. For now, I'd just like to show you the basics. We'll start with inserting content into a cell. This person has just confirmed that she completed part two of the training. So I'm gonna select cell F9, then type an X. It appears in the cell and in the formula bar where you can also enter or edit the contents of your cell. In fact, I'm going to take this opportunity to change the X to a capital X so it's consistent with the rest of the list. Now for the next person, Walter. Although it looks like I've made a mistake, he's on the list twice, both here and here. I'm just going to clear the contents of the extra row by selecting the cells, then clicking the Clear command on the ribbon, and choosing Clear Contents. You can also use Backspace or Delete on your keyboard. So let's take a look at what that did. It cleared the contents of the cells, but the row is still there. That's okay. If you want to delete the cells altogether, all you have to do is click the Delete command instead. That actually removes the cells from the worksheet, causing the cells underneath to shift up and fill in the gap. Just remember that there's a difference between clearing and deleting cells, so you don't accidentally delete any cells that you want to keep. Now I'd like to show you a way to save time by copying and pasting content. For example, I need to mark the rest of the people who completed part two of the training. Start by selecting the cell you want, then click copy on the ribbon. Note the dash box that appears around the copied cell. Next, select the cells where you want the content to go, then click paste. To access more paste options, open the drop-down menu here. These commands will come in handy if you're copying and pasting cells that contain formulas or advanced formatting. You can also get to these commands by right-clicking in the worksheet. For example, to cut and paste, select your cells, then right-click, and choose Cut. The original content will disappear as soon as you paste it in a new location. There's also the drag-and-drop technique for moving cells from one place to another. 
To drag and drop, start by selecting your cells, then place your cursor on an outside edge. As you can see, it turns into a symbol with four arrows and a pointer. Now click, hold, and drag the cells where you want them to go, then release your mouse. There, that's much better. To mark the rest of the people who've completed part three, I'm going to use one of my favorite techniques, filling in cells with the fill handle. You can fill vertically or horizontally by selecting the cell you want to use, then clicking and dragging the square in the bottom right corner. The fill handle can also be used to continue a series, for example, numbers, dates, and other information that's listed in sequential order. See what happens when I use the technique on my header row? It continues the series up to part six. Excel is actually pretty good at filling in certain types of data automatically. Take the new Flash Fill feature. Flash Fill can enter data for you by picking up on simple patterns and guessing what you plan to type. In this example, we'll use the feature to enter each person's first initial and last name, which will serve as their username. Flash Fill eventually figures out what I want and uses the data in the first name and last name columns to complete the series. All you have to do is press Enter to confirm and the data will be added to the worksheet. Finally, in workbooks with lots of data, I sometimes have trouble finding a specific word or phrase that I know is in there somewhere. The Find feature can help by searching the workbook for you. Just click Find and select on the ribbon. Then choose Find, and type the word or phrase you're looking for. When you're done, click Find Next in the dialog box. If the word or phrase is found, the cell containing it will be selected. At times, you may find that you've made a mistake throughout your workbook or you need to swap a certain word or phrase for another. For that, you can use the Replace feature instead. I actually need to change the name of this department from Accounting to Finance. To continue, go ahead and click Replace, and it will jump to the next instance automatically. If you want to skip the current instance without replacing it, click Find Next instead. Alternatively, to replace every instance without having to review each one, click Replace All, and the entire workbook will be updated. Now you know the basics, including insert and delete, cut, copy, and paste, and other time-saving techniques. Everything you need to work with cells in Excel 2013. Okay, well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about using your fill handle. There may be times when you need to copy the content of one cell to several other cells in your worksheet. You could copy and paste the content into each cell, but this method would be time consuming. Um, instead, you can use the fill handle to quickly copy and paste content to adjacent cells in the same row or column. So you would select the cells containing the content you want to use. The fill handle will appear, will appear as a small square in the bottom right corner of the selected cells. And you can see that right there. Um, you're going to click, hold, and drag the fill handle until all the cells you want to fill are selected. Then you're going to release the mouse um, to the to fill the selected cells. So you can see how it, how it filled them all in. And to continue a series with the fill handle, the fill handle can also be used to continue a series. Whenever the content of a row or column follows a sequential order, like numbers, one, two, or three, or days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the fill handle can guess what should come next in the series. In many cases, you may need to select multiple cells before using the fill handle to help Excel determine the or series order. Um, in this example below, the fill handle is used to extend a series of dates in a column. So you can see how they filled in and they were able to get their range. They used their fill handle in the corner. Uh, to use the flash fill, this is a new feature in Excel 2013. Flash fill can enter data automatically into your worksheet, saving you time and effort. Just like the fill handle, flash fill can guess the type of information you're entering into the worksheet. Um, in this example below, they're going to use the flash fill to create a list of first names uh, using a list of existing email addresses. So you would enter the desired information into your worksheet 
a flash fill preview will appear below the selected cell whenever flash fill is available. So you can see how it's wanting to flash fill those in right there. You would press enter. The flash fill data will be added to the worksheet and it shows you that there. So to modify or undo the flash fill, you would click the flash fill button next to recently added flash fill data. And that is how they were able to undo that flash fill. So this was all about being able to use that fill handle and how it's going to benefit you. So why don't you right now go ahead and try doing something with your fill handle. Challenge time. So from here, we're going to talk about the cell basics that we're all about um, in this particular section. So you are going to open an existing Excel workbook. If you don't have one, you can use the practice workbook. I have put a link to the practice workbook on the YouTube channel, and it should be labeled for you as cell basics. Uh, part one of the Excel 2013 class and then you're going to be able to go in there and use the practice workbook that is provided to you. Um, you are want to select cell D3. Notice how the cell address appears in the name box and its content appears in both the cell and the formula bar. Select a cell and try inserting text and numbers. Delete a cell and note how the cells below shift up to fill in its place. Go ahead and cut cells and paste them into a different location. If you're using the example, cut cells D4 through D6 and paste them into E4, E6. Try dragging and dropping some cells to other parts of the worksheet. Use the fill handle to fill in data to adjoining cells, both vertically and horizontally. If you're using the example, use the fill handle to continue the series of dates across row 3. And go ahead and try using that find feature to locate uh, content in your workbook. If you're using the example, type the name Lewis into the field, um, the find what field. So again, don't forget that your practice workbook is available for you on the channel. It, it will also be available for you on the comments for this particular class. So. Don't miss out on that. I will have, I've got links available to you so you have a practice workbook to work with. Okay, well I am going to stop with part one right there. Um, we've already learned a, quite a bit of information. You've done some challenges. Um, I'd like to see you kind of play around with those a little bit more before you move on to part two. But what's going to be covered in part two is actually modifying those columns. You're going to format the cells. We've got some worksheet basics. You've got your page layout. You've also got um, printing workbooks and I've also got some great alternatives for you if you're having a hard time being able to afford Microsoft Office programming. There are some free alternatives to you. So that's what's going to be coming up in part two and uh, I hope you got a lot out of the challenges in the class and as well as the videos. Congratulations, you have completed part one. You made it through Excel 2013 part one. Uh, keep in mind that if it wasn't for you, I would have no reason to have these classes. So thank you for taking the time to watch. Make sure you're listening for your secret code that's within this class so you can win prizes. And actually, I'm giving you that code right now. So write it down if you haven't already. And uh, Excel part one was a breeze. That's your code. Excel part one was a breeze. So uh, make sure I get that code so you can get down um, for, for some fabulous prizes. Um, if you need any additional help, call me to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment because it's absolutely free to you. And we can go over your technology needs, whatever those might be. Uh, don't forget to join the group on Facebook. And that's under Tech Talk Technology for helpful weekly hints and tips. And uh, also keep in mind that uh, there are plenty of stream classes out there. So definitely uh, look at some more of those. We have 47 subscribers on the channel right now. That's, that is fantastic. Get your friends involved. Have them uh, be added. And that gets you entries to win more prizes. So, hey, overall, I just want to thank you for taking the time to better educate yourself and to learn some Excel uh, techniques. And uh, you should be very proud of yourself. Give yourself a big pat on the back. And now you're ready to move on to part two. Great job. 
want to thank the following websites uh, for their information, narration, PowerPoint, Streamomatic, gfclearnfree.org. I can't say enough about gfclearnfree.org. Please uh, look into their website. They're fantastic. Um, but if it wasn't for these websites, we would not have been able to have this class today, so I wanted to give them a thank you.